Hi, I'm Tony Northup, and for chapter three of my book, Stunning Digital Photography, I'd like to show you different flash modifiers and the effects that they'll have on your pictures. And our model, Chelsea Lip, has volunteered to pose for a little while. So the first thing I'll do is take a picture with direct on-camera external flash, no modifiers. Now that's not bad, but that catch light is dead center in her eye, and the uh, on-camera flash here caused a really harsh shadow under her chin. It could certainly be a lot more flattering. Now, I could bounce the flash in this particular room, but bounce flash doesn't work if you have high ceilings or colored ceilings or if you're outside. So in those situations, you want to add a light modifier. So I'm going to add a real simple light modifier first, and this I think we're calling the diffuser cap thing. Thank you, Chelsea Northrup. <laughs> so once I get this cap on, what it's going to do is bounce the light all over the room like a diffuser, but it's specially designed to bounce some of the light straight forward, and that'll just give Chelsea a nice catch light in her eye. So I'll take another picture with this. You can see this flash modifier just completely changed the lighting in a picture. The catch light is still there, but it's very different, and the shadow under her chin is much more pleasing now. So this is still acting like a bounce flash, though. I wouldn't want to use this outside. You'd see a little bit of the light going forward, but your flash would be sending most of its light off into space, and that wastes batteries and makes a lot of noise. So generally, you'll want to use direct light instead of bounce light. So I'll give this back to my beautiful wife here. And uh, Chelsea, if you would hand me the small soft box. Now you can get a wide variety of accessories that attach directly to your flash. And this particular one, you see it has little straps around it and just goes over the end of the flash. And it's designed to work with just about any type of flash because its size is adjustable. Now I wouldn't bounce this off the ceiling. Instead, I would point it directly forward. So I'll take a picture with this direct flash. So that's way better than direct flash, and what we did was just made the light source bigger. This is just reflecting some of the light around, and instead of having the light source the size of the flash head now, it's that much bigger. But all the light is still going directly forward, so I'm not wasting it all by bouncing it off the ceiling or sending it off into space, and therefore I'll be able to take more flashes faster. I won't be going through as many batteries, but we can go bigger yet. We can get even more pleasing with a bigger light source. So I'll swap this out. And Chelsea, if you could hand me the medium soft box. Yeah, there you go. So you can leave it on that flash. Uh, I'll trade flashes with you. Now the reason I'm trading flashes with Chelsea is the other flash didn't have the Velcro on it. And this flash does. You can see some of these flash modifiers use Velcro to attach. And you have to stick some Velcro on your flash. Sometimes it's with adhesives and sometimes it's just a stretchy band that goes over it. Either way, it's kind of a pain. It's really nice when you don't have to use that, especially if you're taking it off and on a lot. Uh, but this LumaQuest uh, Pro Max softbox does require that. So I'll put this flash on my camera and give it a shot. Bigger light source is generally better light for portraits. The downside is they get more clumsy. That's why this one had to use Velcro. It's a little too heavy to just strap on there with friction. And the clumsier it gets, the more challenge you're going to have attaching it, and the harder it's going to be to move around and to carry. And if you're working at an event and moving with tight quarters, well, this one's okay, but it ain't bigger and it could be a problem. And we actually do have a bigger softbox, and I just love the light from it, but it's such a pain to use, and I'm going to make you watch me try to attach it. Uh, so, Chels, if you could just hand me that big softbox there. Yes, it's big and difficult. I'm gonna need both hands. So this particular bounce flash, actually I need to point the flash up and then it will redirect the light forward. And like the other softbox, it uses Velcro. So I'll move my flash up there and now I need to attach all these Velcro surfaces. Oh, so convenient. All right. So, now, it's pretty well stuck on there, but it looks ridiculous, <laughs> and it's actually quite clumsy. Uh, but I'll take a sample picture so we can see the effect that it has on the light. So you can see this one 
even better, bigger light source. But you know what? I had to adjust my flash. It was working a lot harder. You might've been able to hear it. And everybody here is making fun of me for having this ridiculous thing on my flash. And that means if you're working a wedding or shooting an event, everybody's gonna be talking about that ridiculous thing you have on your flash. You just give up any kind of subtlety whatsoever. And if you're trying to carry it, it's gonna be bouncing into things. That happens all the time. And, and this thing will come loose and just flop over on you at the worst moment. So this is the LumaQuest Big Bounce. You can find other manufacturers that make something similar. I love the light that it makes. If I have to use an on-camera flash, this is the best light quality that I'm gonna be able to get. But it's also just such a pain that I'd find I don't go to it all that often. Now, Chelsea has another more convenient option for me there. I'll bend it for you too. Yeah, you know what? And trade flashes with me too. Go back to that young oh, no. Sure. Thank you. This is a rogue flash bender and it attaches to the top without Velcro or anything, just using a strap. And it gives you this kind of large white surface that you can bend. It's got some uh, metal in here that allows it to hold its shape. So I think one of the most versatile ways to use it is just to have it pointing up like this. And that's gonna allow a lot of the light to bounce up and kind of bounce around the room if you're indoors, but some of the light will be reflected forward. So I'll take another shot of Chelsea with this. What nice light. And because I didn't bend it down, some of the light bounced up and went off the ceiling. You can see two catch lights in her eye, one from this direct flash being bounced forward and, and the other from the light that was bounced around the ceiling. Now, if I'm outdoors, or if I just want to avoid the bounce flash, all I have to do is bend this forward. And now, most of the light will be bounced forward. It's changing the shape of the light surface a little bit though. So I'll take another picture now. So if you look closely at the shadows and the catch light, you can see that just that little bend did change the light. There's no more catch light from the ceiling. Almost everything is being bounced straight forward. And it's using the flash much more efficiently now because it doesn't have to light up the whole room. This is what I would want if I were working outside. Maybe you want a little bit of bounce flash and a little bit of direct flash. That's really easy with the Rogue. You can just uh, bend this up like this. Now, I feel like I should say, because I'm saying so many nice things about this, I'm, they're not a sponsor or anything. I just paid for this out of pocket. I just happen to like the product. I also feel like it gives you most of the effect of the large softbox with a lot more convenience <laughs> and none of the kind of like sticky adhesive and Velcro that I had to deal with. Now I do want to show you one more accessory and that is a flash bracket. So if you can hand me that bracket there, Charles. Now the way a flash bracket works is you can attach it to the tripod mount in your flash and then it just moves the flash a little bit farther away from the camera lens. And generally with portrait lighting especially, the farther you can move the light source away from the lens, the more pleasing it's going to be. And this particular bracket has a handle built right into it and it will still allow me to hit the shutter button. I have an off-camera shoe cord attached here. You can get generic ones for like 10, 15 bucks. Don't buy a brand name one. And this just attaches right to the camera. It just allows the camera to communicate to the lens. We have full TTL and all those automatic settings. You don't have to worry about changing light conditions or anything. So if you can hand that big flash back to me. Thank you. I'll bend this down again a little bit and take another sample shot. All right, so I feel like my flash get up here is starting to look pretty ridiculous again and certainly not discreet. So the bracket moves the flash away from the lens even further and allows you to go vertical while keeping the light up above the eyes. I hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions, just leave a comment below. And if you wanna see more free videos like this, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. If you like the video, also click like just to show your support. I have a book and DVD series out. The book is Stunning Digital Photography, the number one photography book in the world. And it has more than seven hours of video just like this, commercial free, most of which you can't get anywhere else. And you can get the ebook for $9. Super cheap, right? 
If you are not a book person, you can check out our video training series that's also available on Amazon, or you can go to sdpcommunity.com. Just check the description for the links. And again, leave me a comment below if you have any questions. Thanks.